Vampires. They go around at night, stalking their prey, feeding off the blood of their victims. The vampire monster is exciting to children, but for modern adults and in modern storytelling, some believe the vampire is being used as a symbol for the evils of the Republican Party. The idea of the elite callously feeding off the life of the weak. A stark contrast to the symbol of the evils of the Democratic Party. Zombies. The mindless herd. Wandering. Consuming everything. But making nothing. But that's a video for another day. So where did the vampire legend start? The idea of a blood drinking monster has existed for thousands of years. But most of these early vampire like monsters were considered demons or other non-human entities. How did vampires go from being these non-human entities to representing an uncaring elite? Well, in the late 1300s, the plague started making their rounds through Europe. People were dying so quickly, the ceremony and rituals that would normally take place when someone died were replaced by body collectors and mass graves were created to contend with the constant influx of dying people. The decay that bodies would experience in private was now on full display. For nearly everyone, it would be the first time they'd see a body decompose. There are things that happen as a body breaks down. The body fills up with gas, and sometimes fluid can leak from the corpse's mouth. When body collectors and other people observing mass graves witness some of these events, they misinterpreted what they saw. A corpse with an inflated abdomen and blood leaking out of its mouth looked like it might have been alive and eating blood. But the corpses were never seen doing these things during the day, so it was believed they could only feed at night. Another phenomena observed were holes appearing on the shrouds placed on the deceased's head, revealing the teeth. Shrouding a body was common practice, used to offer the deceased privacy and to give it some defense against wild animals before the body would be buried or cremated. Bacteria found in the mouth would cause the shroud to break down around the mouth, exposing the teeth underneath. When corpses were found this way, people reasoned the deceased was actually alive and had eaten the shroud, giving vampires the name Shroud Eaters. While these ghoulish images do a fine job of conjuring fear, these first vampires are far from the horror royalty we are familiar with today. Something changed. Hundreds of years later, in order to consolidate power, affluent Europeans started marrying within their small social groups. Fast forward several generations, and many of them began to develop diseases due to genetic disorders caused by this inbreeding. A handful of them would go down in history as vampires. But one that really left their mark was Countess Elizabeth Bathory of Hungary. The Guinness Book of World Records calls her the most prolific female murderer, and her sadistic practices made her a major influence in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Born Elizabeth Bathory, she was the daughter of Baron George Bathory and Baroness Anna Bathory. Elizabeth had a long line of royal ancestry. Her family's history suggests that they were closely related to each other. She likely suffered from a number of hereditary health disorders. She was known to have epileptic seizures that led to an array of pseudo-quackery cures that inspired many of the most insidious stories about the Bathory vampire legend. And possibly introduced her to some of her sadistic practices she would become famous for as she aged. Because of the lack of hard evidence available about Elizabeth's childhood, this period of her life is where most of the speculation exists. One popular rumor is that she was made to drink blood to cure her seizures. The idea of blood being responsible for both sickness and health led doctors to believe you could cure someone's seizures by having them drink the blood of someone who did not suffer from seizures. If this is true, Elizabeth would have started drinking blood at a very young age, and maybe acquired a taste for it. Another rumor claimed she was taught by her family to be callous and to worship Satan. There's no evidence to support this. More than likely this is an embellishment added to her legend after she was already an adult 
or even after her death. At 15 years old, Elizabeth married 19-year-old Ferenc Nadasti. His family was not as powerful as Elizabeth's, but they were very wealthy. Ferenc was an excellent soldier and was eventually promoted to the rank of chief commander of Hungarian troops. He would go off to war and leave Elizabeth alone to take care of all of his affairs. In Ferenc's absence, rumors started circulating about Elizabeth. Townspeople would hear whispers about what went on in the castle, about how Elizabeth would take delight in torturing and killing her servant girls. Elizabeth allegedly had a torture chamber where she would force pins and needles under her victim's nails, tie them up, and cover them in honey for bees and ants to attack them, sometimes even bite or cut off portions of their faces. Then the unthinkable happened. Elizabeth's husband, Ferenc, died at war. After his death, Elizabeth went completely mad. Not only was she torturing and killing servants, but she would have daughters of peasants brought to her too. Even the daughters of noblemen, sent to her to be taught manners, were in danger. And her methods became even more sadistic. There are reports she would stick needles through her victim's lips, bite their breasts, and cut into them using scissors. She made one girl cook and eat a part of her own flesh before she died. It is said she believed the blood would keep her healthy and beautiful. Eventually, word of Elizabeth's evil acts made it to King Matthias II. He sent out two men to collect evidence on the charges against Elizabeth. When the two men returned, they came with hundreds of horrific accounts. According to their accounts, Elizabeth's victims were as young as ten, and some were being kidnapped. Elizabeth Bathory was sentenced to being locked in a room in the castle. She died in that room three years later. Now the case of Elizabeth Bathory shows some of the progression of vampire origins. From demons and monsters, to the undead corpses and mass graves that drink blood at night, to a person of high standing drinking blood, torturing and killing. But what about vampire weaknesses? Some health disorders brought on by affluent people only marrying each other have also become part of the vampire legends. One of the most noteworthy was Porphyria. Porphyria is the medical name for an extremely rare metabolic disorder. Individuals with this condition have skin that is extremely sensitive to sunlight. Being out in the sun can cause redness, swelling, blisters, and even permanently damage any uncovered skin. This would cause the sufferers to have very low vitamin D levels, making them more susceptible to gum disease. Red, inflamed, receding gums would make the canine teeth of these individuals look more prominent, giving them a fanged look. There are other symptoms that link porphyria to vampires. One of the most common myths is that vampires drink the blood of others. Porphyria can produce reddish or brown urine, and this may have contributed to the belief that individuals with these symptoms were drinking blood. It doesn't help that some doctors encourage sufferers to actually drink good blood to compensate for their bad blood. Another hallmark vampire trait is an aversion to garlic. Garlic's high sulfur content makes it a trigger for painful attacks for people that suffer from porphyria. Someone that suffered one of these attacks would appear to be afraid of garlic. I hope you enjoyed this journey from ancient blood drinking demon to modern day horror royalty. There's so much that wasn't discussed here, because like most legends, bits and pieces have become added on through the years. If you know of other diseases or other people that have had an effect on vampire lore, tell us all in the comments. If you enjoyed this and want me to do origins for other horror icons, maybe your favorite ones, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the documented UFO encounter, Who is the Grinning Man in Druid Cold? Or True Dogman Stories.